Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. In this video, I am going to be going over a loadout for a very special hike. This doesn't look right. Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, backpacking, and the gear that goes with it. As you can see, the loadout is a little different than I would normally have, and that is because I am going on a vintage backpacking trip. My dad was a backpacker back in the classic days of the 70s when backpacking was really just starting to take off. Growing up as a kid, I remember he always had his big orange external frame backpack hanging up in our garage, probably a lot like this one, maybe even the exact same brand and model. We're not 100% sure. But my dad took me hiking a lot, and he is probably responsible for my love of the outdoors and backpacking. So last year I saw a Jansport external frame backpack on Marketplace for like $5, and I decided it would just be fun to have one. I'd never really used an external frame backpack, didn't know that much about how they worked. So I went and picked it up, and I took it home, and I tried it on, and I took it apart, and I learned how the different sections work and that sort of thing, and I just found it fascinating. And that kind of led me down a rabbit hole into the whole history of backpacks. And I made a video about that that I will link to in the description below, along with links to all of this gear if you're interested in it. Not too long after I made the History of Backpacks video, I decided it would be fun to try to do a vintage backpacking trip. So I got on to one of my favorite gear groups on Facebook and I simply asked, if you were going to go on a vintage backpacking trip, what do you think you would need to bring? Well, that question generated so many responses that I actually created a vintage backpacking Facebook group just for people that were interested in this sort of thing because apparently a lot of people were. Well, I've been piecing together my vintage backpacking kit. It's not perfect, but it is still pretty darn good, and there are a few pieces that I am especially happy about having. So this is my loadout video for my vintage backpacking trip. Now for this video, I'm not gonna go through every piece of gear and do an ounce count, because I'm not really doing this as a review, but I will put the total weight of everything once I weigh it. Really the centerpiece of the whole gear loadout is this backpack. This is the Wilderness Experience Top Loading S-Frame Backpack. Not the most clever name for the model of a backpack, but I guess they didn't really care about those things that much in those days. This is a classic external frame pack with a main body, a supplementary body that is split off from the main, and big pockets on either side covered with kind of protective rain flap. I was super excited when I found this pack because the guy that showed it on there was actually willing to sell it to me. I showed it to my dad and I said, what do you think? We've been looking for your backpack for months. Does this look like it? And he said, you know what? That one looks the closest of all the ones I've seen. So I went ahead and picked it up. Wilderness Experience is one of the original backpack manufacturers. At the time that they made this pack, they were located in Chatsworth, California. So this is an American made, California made backpack. I'll do a full review on this pack and maybe the Jansport as well once I've had a little bit more experience with it. But for now, I'll just let you know that I have taken this apart and I actually had to swap out the hip belt because this one's was so old, it really wasn't adjustable anymore. And it was also so small that I couldn't even use it. So I swapped out for the Jansports hip belt. So this is kind of cool. I've actually got a Wilderness Experience backpack on a Kelty frame with a Jansport hip belt. So I kind of hit three big original manufacturers of backpacks from this time period all at once. Now of the big three, that takes care of the backpack. For my tent, I actually got on Walmart's website and found one of the cheapest A-frame tents I could find. And I picked up the Stansport Scout backpack tent. I have absolutely no confidence that this is gonna be a great tent, but I think this is gonna do fine for me because in California right now, it is still extremely hot. It will not rain. So as far as shelter goes, I'm not terribly concerned about the quality of the tent, but I thought it would be cool to get a classic A-frame looking tent for this trip. For my sleep system, I'm gonna be using good old foam closed cell roll-up mat and the biggest, heaviest sleeping bag I could find. I don't even know who makes this, but I wanted something that was gonna look right on the pack and be kind of the correct weight. All right, let's move on to the kitchen and my food. The second piece of gear that I am super excited about is that right there. Yes, folks, for those of you that recognize it, that is an original Swedish-made Svea 123. 
This is the classic of all classic stoves. It was not easy to get my hands on this. I won't even go into the whole story about how I ended up with it. Just suffice to say, it was a struggle, and I'm very, very excited to own this. This is one of the finest made pieces of backpacking gear that has ever existed, and I mean, I am just honored to even have one, and I'm looking forward to checking it out on trail. Yes! I will also be bringing a lighter or some matches if I can find any. In addition, I've got a nice heavy steel pot, a small frying pan for my eggs, an MSR bottle for fuel, and a Nalgene bottle. Now, I know that's not the right size or the right color for an original Nalgene bottle. I think it was like the 80s or 90s maybe before they started going to different sizes and colors. I used to have one of the original gray ones. It's gone. I don't really feel like going out and spending money on that when I have this. So deal with it. Another piece of gear that I am probably unreasonably excited about is this Sierra Cup. No, this is not an original. Getting one of those is extremely difficult and they are extremely expensive when you can find them. This is just a brand new Sierra Cup and I'll use it to drink my coffee in the morning. Speaking of drinking, I've got a Boda bag here. I thought about just getting an old school aluminum canteen because I wanted that good metallic taste in the water. But my dad had one of these, and I'm not sure if he ever used it backpacking or not. I know some people did, but that is what I'm going to go ahead and bring on my trip. As far as other food, I do have one Mountain House meal. Mountain House has been making dehydrated food since World War II, so I count it as classic. I'm also bringing some pemmican bars. This is bison meat uncured bacon and cranberry. Several people told me that pemmican was a must for a vintage backpacker, and I also read about it in Colin Fletcher's book. Someone also said I needed the Ova Easy egg crystals that are allegedly surprisingly good. I'm gonna have the peaches as a snack. I've got oatmeal. I will be eating these things either in the pot, out of the pan, out of the Sierra cup, and to eat with, I'm just gonna bring a couple pieces of silverware from home. As you can see, I'm gonna be carrying this food in a bear canister. I'm not sure if it's gonna be this one or my bigger one. In Yosemite, which is where I am gonna be going, you have to have a bear canister. You cannot use a bear bag. I know how to hang a bear bag, but I'm gonna go ahead and be legal and use the bear canister instead. All right, now that we've covered the big three, the kitchen and the food, I'm gonna to go to some of my other gear. Here you see a couple of my tools. I've got a Swiss Army knife multi-tool, big old buck knife, trowel and toilet paper for, you know, got the big giant plastic flashlight, no headlamps on this trip. Off camera, I am going to be using some technology because to film this trip, I need it. So I'm gonna be bringing the GoPro with a mini tripod. I'm gonna have a power charger brick in case I need it for the GoPro or my phone, which I will also have. Batteries and a satellite communicator. That stuff is gonna be packed away. I'm only gonna use it in the case of an emergency. I've got my glasses case because I need these and I have prescription sunglasses. Don't want them to get beat up on the trail. Bringing a bandana instead of a buff. I've got a pen and a notebook because apparently backpackers took notes and stuff like that back in the day. This is the Tahoe Yosemite Trail book from Thomas Winnett. This was my dad's. This is basically the book that created the Tahoe Yosemite Trail, the one that I will be backpacking for this trip. I have photocopied the relevant pages and I'm gonna be using those as my map with a compass. Now I'm actually gonna be starting at the end in Yosemite, hiking up into Cold Canyon, camping and coming back, so that's gonna be a very small section, but it is officially part of the Tahoe Yosemite Trail. And then finally at the bottom I have a med kit with some basic medical supplies. All right, last but not least, we need to talk about the clothing. It just wouldn't be right to have all this cool vintage gear and go out wearing today's high-tech hiking clothing. On my head, a bucket hat. For my shirt, I went with this classic. For the downstairs area, sorry, but it had to be done. Since I know it's gonna be hot and I'm gonna be sweating, got me some sweatbands. Now I tried to find a good old beaten up pair of Danner hiking boots, but those things are incredibly expensive. I actually went with Keen Felderberg APX waterproof boots. They are all leather suede and they even come with red shoelaces. Now if that doesn't say vintage, I don't know what does. In addition to the boots, my feet will also be rocking these nice heavy 
wool socks, long underwear, heavy woolen shirt, and just in case it rains, which it won't, I got a poncho. All right, I think that's it. This is my vintage backpacking loadout.